this video tutorial we're going to have a brief look at Java methods. Let's look at this class that we've created called dog and let's look at some of the methods inside this dog class. Let's have a look at this method called speak and we see that the method starts with the keyword public and what that means is that anyone can call this method. Uh, that's followed by the keyword void. This is the return type for the method and the void return type means that this particular method called the speak method does not return any kind of an answer to whoever invoked it. Between these regular parentheses are the parameters and we see that this particular method speak takes one parameter which happens to be a string named s. This variable name, it's important to understand, only lives between this curly bracket here and this closing curly bracket there you can see that it's being used right here inside the body of the method. Inside the method are all the instructions that get executed each time the method is invoked. If this return type is not void, let's say it's an int for example, then the method must also return an integer answer to the caller. One way of doing that would be something like this. In this case we would be returning the value 5 to whoever called the speak method. I'm going to put this method back now to the way it was. Let's have a look now at some methods that change the instance or the state variables of the dog. This particular class has three state variables, a string that holds the name of the dog, a decimal number that holds its weight, and an integer that holds its age. Look at this method called setName, which takes a string argument. The string argument has a variable named newName. When this method is called, the new name argument is used to update the permanent name of the dog. Now let's look at a method that doesn't change the value of any of the instance variables, but simply returns one of them to the caller. Let's look at this getName method. You can see it takes no parameters because there's no information inside the parentheses. However, the return type happens to be of string. When this method is called, the name of the dog, which is stored in the instance variable name, is returned to the caller. Now let's compare the getName method to the getWeight method. Can you see why getName returns a string, but getWeight returns a decimal number? Of course, it's because the instance variables that they return are of different types. The name of the dog is a string, but the weight of the dog is kept as a decimal. As we conclude this tutorial, Let's see how we might invoke these methods from a test class. When your English teacher taught you how to construct English sentences, you can see that the noun and the verb patterns are distinct here. The period ends the sentence, and we typically have the noun followed by the verb. In Java, we have a slightly different structure. We have the noun followed by the verb, but we usually use a period to denote ownership. Here, it's clear that the dog D is doing the speaking. Furthermore, in Java, methods or action words always have these parentheses. Also, whereas a period was used to end your English sentence, in Java we use a semicolon to end each line. Let's look at the test class now, which we call dog tester. Here we start by defining a new dog with the variable name D, and here we're setting the name of the dog D to be Luna. Once again, you can see the ownership where D is the one whose name is being set. The period implies ownership. Because the set name method takes a string, we have supplied one, in this case Luna. Now, we can use the get name method to find out what the name of the dog is and then print it. Let's run this program now and see what happens. And you can see we have successfully been able to reproduce the name of the dog.